This video is sponsored by Issue. We're going to use conditional text. It's one of those that when the right job comes along, I use it. But sometimes I forget about it. Sometimes I use layers depending on what I want to do. I'm going to show you what I do with this conditional text. In this case, I have two different languages I want in this particular layout. And I also have different numbers down here So uh, because we're doing different regions. So we have different, different information we need to change out. So I'm going to open up the conditional text panel which is down under Type and Tables, Conditional Text. No matter how hard I look, it's not where I expect it to be. I mean, that makes sense, but it's just not where I expect it to be. I have a couple different conditions set up. I'll show you how I created those in a second. But I have English, Spanish, and I have West Coast and East Coast. And right now, the visibility icon is for English, East Coast. But I can change that. I can click the little eyeball, and my English text goes away. And I click the Spanish text. If you read Spanish, Please don't laugh if this isn't right. This is me trying to do Spanish. Um, so I've got some uh, the Spanish text in there, and it all lives in the same exact um, same exact uh, paragraph or I'm sorry text frame. If I come in here and actually turn on both of them, they're both here. We can see where the English ends, and immediately the Spanish begins. This is where it gets kind of clunky if you've got a lot of text, because we don't want to put a space between those two, because then I have a space at the beginning of my paragraph when I turn on the Spanish ones. So usually what I do, I'm going to create a new page here. And this is the page setup that I used to have. What I generally do is I'll come in, and I will select text. And if you notice, it says unconditional text. By default, all your text has no condition applied to it. But then I'm going to go ahead and create a new condition. And we'll just call this condition one. That's fine. Leave all the settings that are there. And then I need to select this text. And I'm going to say condition one uh, is applied to that. So I click that. So now that's the condition for that. I'm going to turn that off. And I still have this text frame that's here. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it again with some text frame, or with some text. And I'll start it in a different Oops, yeah, I know. I did that wrong. Let me just delete some of this. I just didn't want it to begin with the same text so we can actually see a little difference there. Um, and so I come in here, and then I can tell that, again, a new condition. Condition number two, OK. And then I'm going to apply that to all the text that's sitting here. So now I can turn on one and two, and both of my texts are there. So again, you probably want one on at a time. So let's go back now to page one. So I can turn on, let's turn condition one off, let's jump to page one, there we go. And I want just the, let's just do the Spanish on the East Coast. But then we decide, oh, actually, this is for the West Coast. So I make this PDF, then I turn off the East Coast, and I turn on the West Coast. So now I have Spanish West Coast, boom. That's cool, but that's a lot of turning on these conditions on and off. So one of the other things I can do is I can go into my show options because we saved a lot of room by hiding this option. There we go. Now we got one more line added to our panel. Um, and I have these sets that are in here. So I can turn on any ones that I want. If you use Photoshop and you know uh, layer comps, it's sort of the same thing. We turn on the layers that we want or the items that we want, and then we save it as a set. So I can come in here. So I have one that's called English West. So I have the English West Coast ones applied. Boom, print that out. Then I come in here and I say, OK, now it's the English East Coast. Do that. Then I go ahead and switch it to the Spanish West Coast and then the Spanish East Coast. So I have all that in there, and I can turn those items on and off. I use this a lot for like sales flyers, just because there's like a lot of different coupon values for depending on who the coupons are going for, things like that. A lot of text like this I find to be a little cumbersome. And if I'm just doing big uh, chunks of text in two different languages, I tend to put those on just separate layers. But again, it depends on what you're working on. But I love conditional text to be able to turn that on and off. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. For thousands more InDesign tutorials and articles, be sure to visit InDesignSecrets.com. While you're there, sign up for our free InDesign Tip of the Week. Thanks for learning with us.